Okay, this is Twisted Sister. I'm making the video for the P40C on War Thunder. Uh, there's already some people that have made these videos, and they're using the dynamic campaign. Uh, I'm going to actually show you how to find this plane. Uh, should have started it. Okay, so I'm in. I'm in my main War Thunder page. You click up in Battles, which you know you might know. That's where you find Dynamic Campaign, Historical Campaign. Click on that. Click on Dynamic Campaign. Go down and find Attack on Pearl Harbor. And I'm not sure, but I think it's varying the missions and stuff in the planes. Uh, click on Start. Okay, now this is where it's important. You need to click in 1940. It says planes from this year, 26 planes from earlier, zero. I tried to click in 1940 and it didn't have them, which is cracks me up because actually the P40C came before the P40E. And some uh, I've corrected a few guys on YouTube. Okay, it brings you to this screen. It says attack on Pearl Harbor. It tells you campaign status. It says July 6, 1941, which was well before December 7th. But anyways, it tells you the sectors and that there's uh, however many bombers and and fighters and infantry and tanks and so on and so forth, which is your like some of your ground and stuff. Okay, click on apply. Okay, then we got head-to-head -head combat. We got the F4 F4 Wildcat, which is before the F4 F3 and the F4 F1. Uh, combat Air Patrol, Air Combat Patrol P40E, and that's your Later P-40 with the six 50 caliber machine guns. Artillery bombing, Catalina, intercept bombers, F-3, F-2, which is like kind of like your first Wildcats, actually. Uh, P-43. See, and then it doesn't have the P-40C in here no more. All of a sudden, it just doesn't have it. So... What you need to do is exit back out. I mean, exit all the way out. Okay. And we'll try it again because I just had it in there. So I think, like I said, I think what it's doing, if you want to play the P40C, you're going to have to possibly come in here a few times to get a mission with it. Try this again. Apply it. Okay. And then apply it again. See, and it even switched some of the numbers around. Okay, head to head. Now we got the uh, F2A3, which is actually a Buffalo. F4, F3. BBY. F2A, come on. Give me a. There's a P40E again. Ground attack. Uh, let's. Pretty sure I used the 1941. I used the 1941 and give it to me. Maybe, uh, but uh, so this is kind of irritating because I just had it. I should have just left it there, probably. Because one of the things I want to address in this video is the difference between the P40C, the P36G, and like the P40E. Because some people are kind of confused. This game, this game makes the P40C. Let's try the 1940 for grins. The uh, the difference between the P40E and the P40C, this game makes it seem like the C was like a side variant that they developed off the E or something. That's not true. Uh, Republic had made the uh, okay, P40. Here we go. P40C air combat control. Here we go. See, and we have the P40E. Uh, let's see if we have a P36. I can always just go into the regular map. My uh, Here's a P-36A, which might be good enough for discussion. There's a couple of P-40As. So anyway, I, I got combat air patrol with P-40C. So we're going to start this. Let's see, no takeoff airborne. Actually, I want takeoff. I want takeoff, proceed to target. Because I want to look at this on the ground right quick. But see, I actually had to switch that dynamic campaign, or I had to exit and recommend. There's a nice little black and white picture. I don't know when they made this model. I've been, 
I've been bitching for like five, six years about that they could very easily make the P40A through C because this airplane was, was the prototype airplane for this airplane was the P36G and they dismounted the radial engine setup and they built this custom cal around a V12 Allison engine that's about a 1200 horsepower engine and they built this airplane and yeah it looks like it looks a lot like the P40A or I mean the P40E but the difference the P40E is a little bit bigger it's the same shape but it's bigger, it's a little bit longer, the wingspan is a little bit wider, uh, the, uh, the nose isn't kind of straight from the cockpit, it actually has kind of like an uprise bump, the uh, radiator area is larger, it's because they put like I think it was a 1750 horsepower engine in it, and they put 650 caliber machine guns in the wings, where this plane has 230 caliber machine guns in the wings, in each wing and 250 cals on the nose which is the same as your p50g tomahawk and i remember as a kid they actually called the p40 a through c a tomahawk they used the same name for it had the same landing gear has the same canopy window other than on the g model in this game i think they have your little uh radar antenna teardrop bump on top of the fuselage and you have some little uh you have some little vent things under the wings, which I'll actually, I'll actually show you here shortly. And uh, there's been some other comments about this plane so far being in the game that it's chrome. And it's not chrome, it's bare metal. It was a prototype plane, especially the A. The P-40A was a prototype, and they didn't paint it. And then they had actually shipped some out that way because the Air Army wanted them right now to test them. So they painted the markings on them, and they painted the little tail, especially 1940-39. That was a very, very, uh, uh, the Navy and the Army, they both used that little rudder scheme where they painted the red and white stripes and stuff like that. That was pretty normal uh, scheme. Uh, one of the other things to note about this plane is this is actually the first plane that the Flying Tigers used was I think a B model. I don't even think it was a C. I think it was a B and then they had replaced them with C's. And then when the E's came out, they had replaced them with the E's. I think the E's came out in either really early 1940, mid, I think it was about mid 1942 to late 1942 actually. They didn't have E's. And uh, you watch movies like uh, Pearl Harbor and uh, you know, a lot of war movies, they use e, they use P-40Es in the movies because that's what they had available, you know, as, as, as museum planes that still fly and stuff like that, you know. And Black Sheep Squadron, they have uh, the first episode, uh, Pappy Boynton, or Gregory Boynton, as he was known as, he was known as Pappy later when he led the Black Sheep. He actually had flew in the Flying Tigers, and uh, he had malaria real bad, and he actually jumped in an airplane and flew it away from China to go accept command of try to get a squadron and stuff and I don't know how much it's exaggerated in the series but they show it in the series and the first plane they, they have him flying in the series to uh, tangle with some zeros is a P-40E which was not available in 1939 and or 1940 and or even 1941, and the uh, and the time frame that he would have been doing what he was doing, he would have been in this plane right here. And at that point, these planes were painted green. They had the Taiwanese Air Force markings on them, and they had the mouth and the uh, the shark's mouth, which you could tell by looking at this plane. This plane is really it's a good airplane to put the shark's mouth on. It's a real easy plane to fit the shark's mouth and the eyes on. And uh, it definitely baffled the Japanese. The Japanese were wondering how the Chinese Air Force all of a sudden had these nice little, little modern aircraft. And it also took the, didn't take the Americans long to figure out that uh, with this aircraft that uh, it couldn't outmaneuver a zero where the P-36A, P-36B was actually somewhat comparably uh, maneuverable with a zero. But they were slower than this plane. They were lighter than this plane. 
And they also, this plane was one of the first planes to put a one inch steel plate silhouette thing behind the uh, pilot's cockpit so that bullets coming from behind were less likely to kill the pilot. So this had a big armor plate they put in it. It made it heavier. And, uh, but for all intents and purposes, this was, a, this was an upgraded P-36G and had the same armament that the G, G model Tomahawk had. And like I was saying, as a kid, I had actually seen pictures of the P-40A through C that was titled the P-40 Tomahawk. And then uh, late, later on, they call, started calling them the Warhawk. So instead of having you watch me fly this whole mission, I'm going to escape out of here. Uh, I don't know if I can. Yeah, I need to return the hangar. That. So to go back on this plane, I'll probably have to reset the whole thing because I'm going back to the hangar, unless it just happens to give me the same exact missions. Okay, so we'll go back to the hangar. Okay, click the X. Okay, and it kind of does. Now we'll see See if it takes me to the same exact ones. There's a P-40E head-to-head -head combat. P-40C, it looks like it kept the same missions. Uh, P-36A, two P-40s. Okay, let's go this, let's go to the P-36A right now, even though it's not the G model. Uh, yes. But the thing with the A is what I want to show you is that if you look at this body, let skip that right quick. Okay. Now, if you look at this body, other than the radial engine on this, for, for the most part, if you look at the canopy and you look at the tail, and of course the plane's shorter because the inline engine was longer, but for all intents and purposes, this is the same aircraft. The only difference, uh, this with with this being the A model, I think it just has the two machine guns in the nose. I don't think they're 50 cals either on the A. I think they're 30s. I need to relook. No, oh, it rearmed it because I actually shot the uh, machine gun. So let's take take off in this one right quick. Let's see. Machine gun says it has 500 rounds and 200 rounds. No, I think this does have some wing-mounted machine guns. I don't know why I can't see them. So I think this had the 250 cals in the nose. Unless one of those machine guns is a 30 cal and the other is a 50, which is possible. It looks like the one on the right has a kind of a different barrel, like it has a longer. Uh, barrel output, that's possible. It has a 30 and a 50, which is interesting. I've never, not I've never noticed that about this plane. Uh, let's see. Let's put the gear up. So you notice the gear is basically the same. The covers are a little bit different. This has a little bit more covering on the uh, wheels than the uh, P-40A. But uh, you can definitely tell it's the same family of airplanes. The tail's the same shape. The wings are the same shape. So let's go out of here. Yes. And then we'll go to the P-40E. Because I have all, the only airplane I don't have on the tree, of course, is the P-40C because, okay, let's, uh, Let's see if we do the same thing. We got the P40, P40C again. Okay, let's go into the head-to-head -head combat. And click start. Yes, I want to take off because I want to look at it on the runway. I don't even think I'm gonna take off in this one. You guys have all seen this plane, but unless you actually see the airplanes side by side, in a sense, to compare them. Yeah, skip. That. Okay. Now it's kind of hard to see this plane. If you look at the if you look at the window and you look at the cockpit, you look at the nose. 
Uh, even with the air intake, the nose still has a little bit more of a hump on it. Uh, the radiator uh, cowling is quite a, is larger. It's bigger than the uh, P40A. It doesn't suck up as close to the engine. And of course, this has the uh, six the, the 650 caliber machine guns on it. Uh, if we go from the top, and like I said, this had a bigger engine in it. Uh, I think the uh, the P40 A through C had a an Allison engine that had a 1,250 horsepower, and this one is rated more. I think it was like 1,750, 1,800, something like that. Uh, the wheels, the landing gear work, works practically the same, but it's this you know this this airplane. To the naked eye, they look alike, but this airplane is a different animal a little bit. It's scaled up more. Of course, it has the same flavor. It has the same shape of the tail. It has the same shape of the uh, rudder and the elevators, the vertical stabilizers and stuff. Uh, the wings have the same shape, but this has a wider wingspan. It has a longer fuselage. It's just, it's kind of like they scaled it up about 8%. And uh, this actually, this actually was a rival to the, uh, the P-51, the P-51 Mustang. Uh, the, the, the thing where the Mustang went out was that it was somewhat more maneuverable, and it had a uh, dynamic wing, which these guys never thought of. Uh, the Germans never really figured out the dynamic wing way early in the war, because that's what allowed the Mustang to travel, you know, damn near 2,000 miles with drop tanks, where almost no other fighter in the war had any kind of range like that. What was nice about this plane, though, is this was a very hardy airplane. Uh, again, it couldn't outmaneuver zeros and stuff, but they could fly in pairs, and they could they could zoom, you know, they could zoom and uh, they could zoom and boom, what they called it, and uh, and, you know, and if they could fly them in scissors, sometimes that worked really good against the Japanese. If you if you if you pretty much got in dogfight dogfights, an AM62 up through even an AM65, and and the uh, the AM67s that the uh, Japanese had came out with later, which they didn't build a lot. If you notice, the gear folds up the same way. They don't have that big cowling, you know, it took some of the weight off to not have the cowling on the wheels, even though it was a little, maybe a little more aerodynamic, but it wasn't that big of a problem, but now we, now we can get a top, whoops, level out a little bit. Okay, now we can get kind of a top look at this plane. So, like I said, yeah, to the naked eye, it looks looks same. It's a P-40. The other one's a P-40. You can tell they're both P-40s. This plane is larger, has more power. Uh, it actually, I think, has a little less turn radius than the C did. You know, it has a lot more punch. Uh, you know, your first Mustangs, your P-51Bs, other than the Mark the Mark ones they have in this game, which all have the 20 millimeter and like 500 rounds, which I like because it punches hard, but it just, it, you know, if you get in one of these uh, little dogfight scenarios and you got them 20 millimeter rounds, it's like you just run them out of bullets so fast. You know, and the Americans were pretty good about figuring out 650 caliber machine guns, or even four. They had four on the first Mustangs, six on the later ones. Six kind of be kind of st standard flavor for the Corsair and the uh, this P40 and the uh, the Hellcats, stuff like that. A, a, a 650 cal's had enough punch, and it gave you gave you some ammo to shoot around for a while instead of. You know, 20 millimeters, you ran them out so fast. Uh, unless you're playing arcade in this game where you get the magic reloads and shit. Uh, if you're playing realistic, you know, at least, at least four or 650 cals gives you a little bit of punch and it gives you some ammo for a while. Where 30 cals give you a lot of ammo. Play them Spitfires with uh, 8 to 12 50 or 30 caliber machine guns. And yeah, you got ammo for days. They just don't punch hard. You got to shoot a lot of holes and vital areas of a German plane to knock it down. A German comes along with 20 millimeters, he gets a good beat on you and them 20 millimeter rounds will knock your ass down quick. But, and the Germans had a pretty good 20 millimeter system. They had 
some pretty decent amount of rounds. The Japanese, I think they carried like 100 rounds. They carried 15-inch guns. So in real combat, the Japanese would shoot at you with 30 caliber machine guns until they were sure they were hitting you. Then they'd flip on those 20-millimeter auto cannons because they didn't want to waste that. That was real precious ammo that they didn't want to run out of quick. They had a lot of punch. But if they were not hitting you with them, that wasn't a good thing. So that kind of carries over to the game a little bit. Okay, let's escape out of here for a second. I'll wrap this up. I just wanted to clear up some of these confusions. Some, you know, like I said, these guys made a couple good YouTube videos, but I, and I didn't want to pick on them, but I kind of corrected them. I was letting them know that the P40C is not a variant of the P40E. You know, it came before it. It's a predecessor. It's not a. It's not a variant. It's not something the United States said. Oh, you know, we need a little P40 with a couple 30 cal's and a 50 cal on it. That you know, that that's not what they did. They. Uh, let's see. I actually wanted to get out out of here. Okay, exit. But if you want to pl fly the P40C now, you can fly it in the dynamic campaign. And what's kind of nice about the dynamic campaigns is that, let's see where my presets are with my P40G, that ain't it, it's my jets, ground, uh, tier four, tier five, here's an F3F F, that's a biplane, which is, that's kind of a nice little plane to get your hands on. It's not too bad, the T40E, oh, here it is, P36G, so let's apply this tree right here, which is, I think, my, uh, two slash, two slash, this is a one. Okay, so this is your, this was your predecessor to the Wildcat. This is your Grummond uh, F3, F2, and it has one Browning 50 caliber machine gun in the nose, and it has one 7.62. So this is another one kind of, kind of like the, uh, P36A, it has a 50 cal to have a little bit of punch with 200 rounds, and it has a 30 cal with 500 rounds so that you have a little extra, you know, bombing. And this was a this was a Navy plane. Okay, let's go to this P36G. Okay, now remember I was talking about the teardrop antenna thing on the top, and then it also has, I don't know what these little tubes and vent things are down here this little guy I, I should look it up because they have this whole little thing where they have these little crisscross tubes and then they have some vents and then they have a few little i don't know fins and i really don't know what that's all about kind of thing i don't know what function they had on this aircraft but uh, and you can see this had this has your four 30 caliber machine guns in the wings and it has your two 50 calibers in the nose. And uh, from what I had read, they took one of these airplanes, they dismounted the radial engine and basically they dismounted this cowling that goes right to, from the front of the wings because if you look at this, it bells out. You see how it widens out to support that uh, radial engine. And then they mounted on their Allison engine, and they uh, built the cowling around it, and put the radiator underneath it, and the oil cooler and stuff. And they—I uh, don't know if the prototype was actually a P-36G body. Uh, That's—I had seen that somewhere, but I had seen it in the 1970s is when I read this. So we're talking 40 years ago when I had read stuff about this when I was a kid. I used to build models of these and stuff, but I did notice that the. Uh, like I said, if you compare that, let's get a top shot here like this. Okay, now let's click onto the P40. Same place. See how much bigger the wings are? You, you can, that's one way you can kind of tell the difference because, like I said, get, for all intents and purposes, your P36G is a P40A with a radial engine, and they switch the engine. So if you go... Come on. If if you look at this plane and then you click on the P40E, uh, you can see how much bigger it is. You know, it's not gigantically bigger, but I mean, if you were standing by two airplanes, it definitely has a. Uh, see, does it say the wing? 
tells you the speeds. I don't know if it tells you the wing. I'm right. Let's see. Let's try this again. No, it just that's all it tells you. It doesn't tell you the. Yeah, it doesn't tell you the wingspan. Just tells you the arm. Tells you the armament, which is your 650 caliber machine guns with 1,560 rounds, which wasn't bad. And plus, it could carry a 500 pound bomb and two 100 pound bombs, which I don't think the. I don't think the Tom, the P-36s or the P-40s could do that. I think they could just carry a smaller one. They might might have could have carried a 500-pounder, but I don't think they could carry the 5 with the 200s and stuff, or not feasibly. So I'll go over to this one. And this one has your 430 cals on the wings with the 2,000 rounds and your uh, 450 cal rounds. Uh, it says it can go 311 miles an hour. It's, what's this? this one can go 348. Uh, your turn time is 21 seconds. Turn time on this one 17. So like I said, if you're really if you're you're slugging it out with an AM620, this would in a dogfight this would be a better plane to fight with a zero in than your E. Uh, for booming and zooming tactics like they started using later on, this most definitely would be a better airplane for boom and zoom. And that's kind of what the Americans did. That's what their tactics turned into was, uh, so yeah, I don't think they let you carry bombs on this one at all. They don't, they don't even let you mount the bombs on this uh, plane. And, and seeing as how this is almost in a sense a pre-World War II fighter, this is right up, this is a uh, late 30s. You know, until they started developing better planes, this was a late 30s fighter. They just, that wasn't really a tactic that was used. A fighter was supposed to be a fighter, and they didn't really consider putting bombs and stuff on them too much until the beginning end or, you know, into 1942. They just, you know, they didn't have no need to. They didn't want to. They wanted to use them as fighters, and bombers were bombers, that kind of a thing. So, okay, I've been chatting 27 minutes now, so I'm going to cut this off. And thank you for watching. I hope that answers some questions or some misconceptions about the P-40 series. Uh, oh, Curtis. I keep I was calling these Republics. Curtis was the company that made these aircraft, not Republic. Republic actually made your Mustangs. So you had your P Curtis P-36G, P-36A. It even says this on here. I think it says Curtis somewhere. No, I don't. I thought it would say it. Probably does in the Wikipedia. But... Curtis is the company that went from these P-36 series. They had the P-36A with two machine guns. I think the P-36... Uh, I can't remember the other P-36s in this game. Go to research right quick. We'll go to, Okay, so you got the P-36 here, which is your A and your C. And your C, I think, has 250 cals. Oh, no. It has 150 cal and 130 cal in the nose, and it has two 30 cals on the wings, where the A just has a 30 cal and a, and a 50 cal. Okay, so you go away from that. You go down to the G. The, the G has your uh, 250 caliber machine guns in the nose and your four 50, 30 cals in the wings. And... Again, on this one, uh, that one don't have your little vent thingies. I don't think this uh, C did either. I think it was just the G that had the little vent thingies. So, and those are rank one airplanes. So this is what I'm pretty sure they could do with the P-40C. The P-40C could be right here, and they could just add it in here and make it to where you get the P-40C first. And then you get the P-40 second. And they, this has a 2.7. They could make the uh, P-40C like a 2.3, something like that. Maybe 2.0, 2.1. And I also think they could pop it right over in here as a premium plane. They, they could either do that or they could even to do variants. They could, they could have a P, your P-46A here. Make it a, make it a 2.5. Or make it a 2.4 and then pop it over the next one over here. Make it a 2.5. Put your C here 
and put either an A or a slash B here. And uh, pop them in here as a premium, you know, on, on the one and two. That If they were smart, that's what they would do. And the Mustangs, uh, you got this nice... You got this P-51 and or you got the, uh, where's the A-36? Is it a three? Yeah, I don't see it now. I know it's in here. A-36 right down here. They got an A-36 that's a rank two, and they got a P-51 Mark I. They just call it a P-51. But this has got the 20 millimeters. This has got 650s, but two are underneath the engine and the cowling, and in the wings and this would be so easy all they got to do is take off those chin machine guns take off your air brakes because this is an attack airplane uh, put on a quad prop from a D it was basically an identical prop on a B and you'd have a P-51B in the game they, it wouldn't be hard to throw a P-51B in this game I've, I've been crying about the P-51B uh, they've got all of these P-47s but they don't want to make like a Razorback, you know. They got they got the model of the airplanes. They got they got two, and they actually got a later variant that's an H or something like that. It was a little bit different in the body, but it would it would be so easy. I think somebody already modeled one of these for uh, the uh, CDK. They modeled a Razorback. I didn't particularly like the Razorback uh, Thunderbolt because it had a uh, bar right in the middle of the screen you know i don't like the way they made the windscreen but historically at, you know it was like some people really liked they liked the way it looked they liked the way it looked with the with the razorback thing and with the you know the fuselage going from the cockpit back down to the tail you know and stuff like that they just there's a few things they could do in here it wouldn't be hard and i'm glad they're doing this p40c as a as the uh, festival thingy here, you know, you can actually, which you probably already know this, but if you if if you just stumbled onto this video and haven't seen any of the other ones, uh, whoa, calm down, calm down. So see, you can you can win this P40C along with uh, they have this they have this little ground a British ground vehicle, and then uh, they have this Ursats M10, and Ursats means like. Uh, all I can figure, this has American markings on it in the picture, which drives, which is kind of nuts, because what this is, this is actually a German tank destroyer, but I think it's supposed to be a captured M10, because the M10 tank destroyer was built on an M4 chassis, and they put a 75, like a long 75 millimeter gun on the first ones, and I think later on they had put some 90 millimeters on the uh, last ones. But anyway, these two ground vehicles you can win if you do all of these festival quests. And you can get this, which this is actually this NC-900. That's a uh, French plane. I think it's a French plane, but it's a captured Falk Wolf 190 with French markings, which... I don't know. I'm partially... I'm partially... Well, I like some of the stuff that's captured, and then other stuff I don't dig on too much. Uh, I don't really care much for the Japanese Corsair that's a captured Corsair. Uh, the Germans were known to capture stuff. They had P-51Bs they had ended up putting German markings on and flying them in their Air Force and stuff like that. And they had captured the Russians and the Germans both were pretty... I ain't gonna say bad, They were, but they were known for capturing enemy tanks and using them. Uh, the Americans liked to test stuff that they weren't real big on. You didn't, I don't think anybody had a, a sh like a captured Tiger tank and painted American markings on it and ran it around. And because they would have been hard to maintain and they would also would have been hard to, you would have either had to manufacture arm, uh, ammo for them or you'd have had to steal ammo or had a bunch or something. The Germans were mo more known for doing that and the Russians weren't above doing that. Uh, the Japanese, I think they were kind of like the Americans. If they captured American planes, they didn't mind testing them, but I don't think they really used them in combat like the Germans did. Okay, so I was reading some of this stuff. And then if you click on this thing too, it also takes you to a page where it's a little bigger, explains it a little more. You do these quests and you get these uh, little Christmas tree light thingies on your... 
I think on your main page, you get these little different things and you get X amount. And they said like you earn these Christmas toys, you earn Christmas toys by doing these quests and then for like seven pilot toys, you can get the P40C for set, you can get, or for the ground, if you play tanks, you can get the, uh, the armored vehicle for 13, you can get the M10, the German M10, or you can get for pilots, you can get the, uh, the NC900 is what they're calling it. But like I said, it's a Falk, it's a captured Falk Wolf, which if you play France, that might not be a bad thing because I, I'm interested in history and I'm kind of glad they're doing the French and Italian thing and stuff. I think I could do a little bit more for the Italian stuff, but, uh, you know, I won't cry about it too much. But uh, the uh, uh, the French stuff, most of the French planes just totally sucked. I, I, if you're playing those, I hope you're playing them in, uh, in like... Uh, your test flight stuff. Uh, I love this game ex up to expert, but all of this, the uh, PayPal Ace stuff just drives me nuts. I get so tired of getting in a realistic battle and I'm flying and somebody forces a head on with me and they shoot me in the face and they do one shot. We might as well go play gunfight at the OK Corral and whoever draws first, draws first. Now, OK, down here it's telling you how, how to get lights and stuff. Or what the lights do, they grant 77% RB boosters for seven battles for one Christmas toy. Okay, and it looked like it started on the 22nd of December, and it goes to the 20, January 22nd. Uh, if you work together with other War Thunder players, which I don't mind these games promoting teamwork, but sometimes uh, so there's sometimes there's just people that... I end up playing this and World of Warcraft and War Thunder and World of Warships, and I'm not in clans, I'm not in guilds. Uh, I work hours to where I can't be hanging out with a lot of people all the time, and I just I enjoy these games kind of solitary. I don't really want to play with other people. It might sound antisocial per se, but I'm sure that there's a lot of people that can relate with this that they like to do their own thing, and sometimes they're doing it that you come home, it's midnight. You know, all your friends are in frickin' bed unless you're going to make a bunch of friends online and stuff. And I've done that a few times. I've joined some guilds and clans and shit like that. But it just, it, I, I hate being forced into social situations kind of thing. It's a little bit different if I just got some friends and we're actually doing shit together. And I've had, I've had some friends that used to play Worth Ender. They just don't play it no more. They don't care for it. They've outgrown it. They've went around it. And like I said, one of the things I do when I play this game is I get in here and I pick a plane or a tank or whatever, except for the tanks. You, I wish they had some tank missions. Uh, so what I have been doing in this game is I, I play test flight and I go into the mission scenarios and I shoot down some airplanes and it seems kind of they they kind of sort of fly like the World War II airplanes did. You know, they don't force you into head on and shoot you in the face with their PayPal A status and kill you. Uh, one of the other things I've been doing this down this aircraft here i'm working on this aircraft here i want to put it in the cdk this is one of the airplanes i'm working on i also have 18 videos about where i'm drawing a uh uh a glen in my blender jump into my blender right quick i know this is now almost 40 minutes i need to cut it a little shorter i can make another video about this i get on rants sometimes i appreciate it if you've actually set through this and watched it okay so this is this is my uh whoops this is my, keep forgetting ah why isn't this rotating shift okay don't do something for oh there we go okay I got it now. So anyway, this is a model. This is a M6A1 Sayran. This is what they had flown off of the I-400 and the I-401. And they actually already had this plane modeled in uh, Sturmovic. But, uh, and actually my prop, which was accurate to one of the uh, blueprints, it looks more like a, uh, like an M109 prop. It looks more like a German prop. This actually had a, a engine that was licensed from the Germans because the cowling, the exhaust 
the exhaust ports are going to be low off the engine and it has an air scoop on this side on the port side and on the other side you just have your uh, exhaust it has a double flap system that I got on here which is kind of hard to see I need to figure out how to do the shading so you can see the split lines a little better it has the uh, ailerons uh, the tail I have the rudder and the tail I have looking pretty good I need to put in the splits this actually had these tails had folded down the uh, top of the rudder tail folded down from above the rudder so it fit in the airplane these wings folded up somewhat kind of like a uh, f6f wing the uh, pylons and the uh, pylon attach the uh, the floats and the actual floats for the pylon came off the plane they stored the plane they stored the pylons and the floats separate. They rolled this out on a catapult uh, trolley. They uh, attached the bombs in the hangar. They kept the bombs like under in a little armored section underneath the uh, uh, what I called the aircraft tube in the submarine. And in the I-400 and the I-401 could carry three of these planes. They were building four more submarines at the time. If they, if they actually could have fielded these in about 41 or 42, it could have been a different story. And these, I don't know if they maybe per se changed the fate of the war, but they could have been a serious thorn in the Allies' ass. These could have been a serious threat to aircraft carriers and or Allied ships because, you know, they could sneak them in at night into an area and just at dawn they could launch these things. Uh, I haven't put it in here yet, but this had this had a fit, basically 50 caliber 12.7 three machine gun in the rear for the rear gunner and air and or radio operator and then it had the pilot it carried two people had a big radio in the middle between them uh had no forward guns so in some ways it's like the kate so i imagine if it is, if i ever get this thing textured right and done up right and put it into war thunder it's going to be it would probably be a high maybe a high tier two i don't think it would be a tier three but uh this is another one of these planes like the Kate. It's, it would, it's going to suck in the sense that it's a float plane. It isn't real super maneuverable in some ways, but it, it actually was pretty fast for its size. It had a really big engine in it. It, it really did haul ass. They probably could have better put a better prop on it, like a quad prop or something, but uh, it wasn't a slow plane for as big as it was and as much weight as it could carry. It could carry one 850-kilogram bomb. And it could also, or it could carry a, I don't remember how big the torpedo was, but almost like a long lance torpedo, it could carry a large torpedo. Uh, I think they could have put some guns in the nose, but, you know, they knew it wasn't a dogfighter, but it still could have had some front armament. Because uh, it, it's real similar in some ways to the uh, B, B-7 torpedo bomber, just, you know, I mean, uh, it had, had a nice shape to it. Uh, these also were made to where the pilot could uh, get rid of the, floats if they needed to in the pylons they could uh which would have made it to where they would have had to ditch if they were trying to get back to the submarine they would have had to ditch into the ocean and then have try to you know get rescued by the submarine but uh they did have the option if they would have wanted it or needed it to drop those floats off and those pylons so if they would have had even two maybe limited ammo uh probably would have been more practical to put a couple of 50 cals in the nose or you know, 30 cals would have been pretty weak, but even 30 cals in the nose could have been kind of like the, the uh, I forget what they call them, the other little bombers they just put in the game have a couple 30 cals on the nose. One has a rear 30 and one has a rear 50, but anyway, that's one of the planes I'm working on. Uh, yeah, I don't want to save it. And then the other plane that I'm working on that I have videos of on on, on, the same, on my YouTube channel is... Going to file and uh, da, 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 da. open. Let's find my Glenn. Is the A? Uh, give me the. There we go. I got a lot of files here. I got ships and stuff. Here we go. Uh, once the CD does it, let's see. Open it up. Yeah. Okay. So this is with the picture. And this is now. This is gonna. This is gonna trip you out a little bit, because this is the picture I'm using for reference. And if I turn it, and you can see the body of the plane. So if I hit 
one, shows you the side. I hit seven, shows you the top. Other than, I have I had it saved. It took me a long time to get it this way, but I had it saved to where it was actually kind of like at a 90 degree here, so that it matched the picture, so that I could do that. But uh, as long as I don't save it, it'll go back there. And I've been using the colors to kind of give you the idea. What I have to do now, uh, I had started doing this area in the back where the window curves, but uh, I don't like the way it was coming out, and I didn't know I didn't know how to use the cutting tool. I can actually cut that section out now and build that canopy part in there because I've actually modeled this canopy in the sections to where. It kind of looks like they're all together, but they're actually overlapping sections of the canopy so that uh, when I model the airplane, you can have the canopy, the canopy will be able to open for the pilot and close, and this back canopy will, will be able to, uh, it'll be able to slide back and close or uh, be open and then... Uh, Okay, let's see if I hit Z. See how it disappears? Because act actually the uh, object I'm on is the uh, rudder right now, which I have to I have to model in this little section of the rudder that's this little section here. It's not complete in there yet. And I have the hole. This was actually a little hole because this a lot of this plane was fabric. This was. This was almost like an overpowered Cessna. It had a pretty good little nine-cylinder radial engine in it. It had a double prop. It had the nice little uh, had the nice little uh, had your your elevators and your rudders, but they also worked. Yeah, you could use them like dive brakes, kind of. It, it actually had a. Uh, it actually had these nice little lower. Uh, like I said, your your rudder, your not rudders, your uh, your flaps and your ailerons could like they kind of doubled as air brakes. And th this wasn't really per se a dive bomber. And the the, bo the bombs that carried were very light, but th these were carried on the smaller submarines. They could carry one of these, and the wings actually came off the airplane. And that's why they have these strut supports too, because your your uh, your horizontal stabilizers in your elevators came off the plane. Your wings came off the plane all the way up to the, almost like the fuselage. And uh, that's how they carried them inside the little submarines, not the the I-400 and the I-401 carried the big Sayran, but this uh, your smaller air submarines that were built to carry these planes. And this plane actually has uh, I don't mean I don't mean this plane is in this plane that I have in the picture but this aircraft was actually had the distinct this is the only aircraft that dropped bombs on the continental United States during World War II they actually flew one of these planes off and they dropped some incendiary bombs in Oregon over a forest tried to start a forest fire and the pilot went back years like I think in the 1970s went back to the Oregon City and they had uh I talk to him and honor him. And again, I don't know if you notice this, but like in this wing, there's four areas of this wing that actually, these are actually holes that went through the wings so that you, like when they were handling the wings, they could actually hold the wings by that. And uh, they put this out on the catapult and they attached the wings, attached the uh, horizontal stabilizers and uh, elevators and hook up all the cables and stuff and you know, clip clip the clip the support struts together, and uh, it was a pretty cool little airplane. And like I said, I'm trying to model it, get it in. I want to put this in. Uh, this this would be a really cool airplane to kind of like fly around with the PO2. Although this is a little more powerful than the PO2, and again, it had no forward guns. It has a this has a rear gunner that has to stand up to shoot the machine gun, and it has a 30 cal. So. And with that said, thank you for watching, and like and subscribe if you like. Check out some of my other videos.